This next skill we're going to do is called nasopharyngeal suctioning. Um, we would do this skill if someone's not able to cough up their secretions. The first thing you want to do is check the chart for an order, and then you also want to check for allergies, specifically latex. Um, you also want to look and see if there's any contraindications why we should not be suctioning the person, like a nose or a mouth or a throat injury. Okay, once you've established that, then you can take and come out, and you can wash your hands and gather up all your equipment and come down to the room. Um, usually we wear a face shield with eye protection when we're suctioning, but because you're going to have trouble hearing me speak, I'm not going to put it on for the skill, but know that you should wear one when you're suctioning someone. Once we actually come in the room, you want to identify your resident, Mrs. Johnson, um, explain who I am and what I'm here to do. Um, she's in agreement with it. I've, we've established a means of communication while I'm actually doing it. She'll tap on the bed. I'll also provide privacy because it's not something that you really want someone to see you haven't done. Um, if you feel the need to wash your hands again, if you've got detoured getting to the room after gathering the equipment, please feel free to do so. Okay, we have our saline here, and if it's a new bottle, you can open it up and you do not have to lip it. But we, we're going to say that this bottle is a bottle that's been opened but less than 30 days, so I'm going to use it. My lid's upside down. I'm going to actually lip going to lip my saline like syrup or honey and it pushes the organisms off the outer edge here. So set that there, open up your water soluble, it's water, not oil, water soluble lubricant that we might need. And since I didn't have to listen to her auscultate her lungs because I can hear her gurgling, I'm gonna put my stethoscope to the side and out of the way. Now, make sure your table is clean and dry when you start out because these packages are not waterproof. This, this wrapper that's here is not a waterproof um, wrapper. This is in date. There's no openings or puncture marks in it. When you actually open this, you're going to have to crease the little folds back, and there's a one-inch margin that you can actually touch with your bare hands. Other than that, you shouldn't be touching anything inside here with your bare hand. Now, the cup is laying partly over here on the contaminated part. You want to pick that up on the side, mash it together, and until you can establish which is inside and which is out, just stay to the side. So here's the bottom, here's the top, so I'm good to set this down. I'm going to put it over here because I'm going to need it to rinse my um, catheter out. And notice I'm not going over my field, I'm coming away from my field. Label's in my palm, so if the label's not waterproof, then it won't smudge. And you can go ahead and put your lid back on because we're finished with that. Okay. Now, I'm going to turn our suction on. Um, this particular model we have, 80 to 120, is your medium suction. And we're going to leave it on continuous because once we get down, we want to go ahead and suction out. Go ahead and open up. There's a little sleeve here that you put your fingers under to open up. And that's your one-inch margin here. Okay, and just crease your paper back to the side so it'll stay open. So one inch is contaminated where I can touch. The rest is not. Now, she's still doing fine. I do what I call a reality check. I got my saline ready to go. I've got my suction on. My, my surgical tube is here. So it looks like we're ready to go. One inch margin, I can put my finger in. I'm going to reach in and pick up my glove, step back off my feel. I'm going to go ahead and put my hands in. And notice I keep my hands above my waist. Now, this one I'm going to touch here. And once I actually get ready to put my hand in, I'm going to abduct my thumb or hitchhike. And again, I step back off of my feel so that I wouldn't contaminate anything. And sometimes, as you see, the gloves don't always go on the way you want them to, and you may have to sort your fingers out. Okay. Now, before I take and do anything else, again, I want to look and make sure I've got everything that I need. Now, the suction catheter, right now, the whole suction catheter is sterile. Once you actually connect the surgical tubing to it and touch here, the pink part in back is not going to be sterile. So make sure you've got what you want. And just a minute, I'm going to put the lubricant over here on my feel where I need it. But I want to look and make sure. So it looks like I've got everything I need. My left hand is now contaminated. Okay, once I push this on, from the pink part back will be considered contaminated. Only from the clear plastic board is sterile. 
Now I'm going to go ahead because I may need some lubricant and just put it on this part here because that is not waterproof. Let's put it in your water first just to check our suction make sure we got it. Okay, And just lubricate a little bit about an inch, an inch and a half. Now we're going to go down and she has told me that this is the better side than there. Okay, here we go. Once I go down, there's a couple of things that happen. I have to go in and go out within 10 seconds. I do not put suction on until I start out. And when I start out, I do intermittent suction and I pill roll, twist this back and forth. Okay, so here we go. Going down, 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 down. She's coughing, intermittent suctioning, and I'm twirling as I come out. Okay, now, one of the things you want to take and be sure is keep this sterile. And then take this hand if you don't have a monitor to check her pulse. Because you want to make sure and know that she's fine. Because remember that vagus nerve runs in the back of the throat. And if you stimulate the vagus nerve, it'll brady you down or asystole. So it drops your heart rate. So she looks like she's doing fine. Reassure her. Put her oxygen back on if she has oxygen. Just keep her calm talking to her. Now, once she gets settled down, again, you want to suction out all the secretions that's left in here. Keep this sterile because if she still sounds congested, you want to wait one minute and then go back in and suction her out again. Never suction more than two times. Okay? So she looks all right. She says she thinks she has a little bit more down there. Heart rate's good. I didn't have a pulse ox on her, so I have to check that a little bit later on. Okay? And some of the floors you work on may not have pulse oxes. So start relying on skin color, capillary refill, and how they're breathing and talking to you. Now, I'm going to go back down one more time. Again, my fingers off the suction. When I get all the way down, I'm going to pure roll and intermittent suction coming out. The thing to notice, too, is my hand never touches her nose. It stays close, but it doesn't touch her nose because then I would contaminate my hand. So one more time, going in, feeding in, feeding in, feeding in. She's coughing, intermittent suction, pill rolling, coming out. I'm following it down. Again, roll it around your hand, keeping it sterile there. Talk to her, reassure her, check her pulse, look at her skin color, and get her to take slow, deep breaths. Sometimes you, you have to kind of talk them down and get them to relax. Because not only are we suctioning out their secretions, but we suction out their oxygen when we do this. Okay, so reassure them. Okay. She's sounding better. She thinks she's doing better as far as the secretions. Suction this all the way out. And then this would wrap around your hand pull your glove over top of it and that way all the secretions are contained within it okay? and it goes in the garbage. Any solutions left here goes in the commode and then we throw this also in the garbage. Okay, All of this gets wrapped up and gets disposed of in the garbage also. Now we can turn the suction off, make sure she's comfortable and doing okay. Do you need anything? Are you doing all right? Okay. And she wants to leave the head of her bed up, and there's no contraindications as I can, so I'll leave the head of her bed up. I put her call light back in her reach. I put the stuff back on her overbed table that she wants me to put. Put that bed back down in a low position. And then from here, I'll go out and I'll wash my hands. And then I'll go and document.